Good evening. How's everybody doing? How's everything going on this weekend? We're in like our what fourth week of quarantine and chill, stuff like that. And it's like our what we call it, those of us who are introverted, and I call myself an extroverted introvert because I'm okay being social and I'm okay with being in the house and I have plenty of stuff to do. So thank you to everybody who has, you know, checked me out tonight live on Facebook, also on YouTube, some chick named Star. How are you doing? Um, I have just been deep in thought. I've been deep in research. And around this time when we have the European holidays, I tend to watch uh, Dr. Barashango's lectures on YouTube. So let me know if you heard of, of Dr. Barashango. I just get back into his lectures, get back into his books. And it just brings me back into reality because a lot of us and D Dave the Medic, how you doing? Uh, those of us who don't observe European holidays, you know, we kind of you know, we're like, we're just existing and we're seeing everybody share the madness on our timeline and we're seeing all the craziness. And then also like right now we're in a quarantine. We're, we're going through this new normal. OK, and I'm just going to uh, while I'm just explaining this, I'm going to go to uh, Facebook and let everybody know that, that I'm on. But right now we're doing the quarantine and chill and the, the COVID isolation and stuff. And many people are not working. But we still see people spending their last and, as they say, go to the store to get essentials and they're going to the store to get Easter eggs and stuff like that. That's not essential. <laughs> and it's, it's just crazy because here we are doing this, you know, this new normal and you're really taking this time out if you're smart to evaluate necessary things in your life. But, you know, Easter eggs and Easter baskets and stuff, that's really unnecessary. So I would think during this time, many people would like see how, I mean, I can't tell people what to do, but I'm just, just saying. Right now, this whole like Easter celebration, you could take some time out, research it and really ask yourself, what am I celebrating? Make this make sense. A rabbit that lays eggs. Okay. And when you get down into the nuts and bolts of it, it was from German. I'm sorry, it was from Germany. The Germans, it's their holiday. You know what I'm saying? So why are we as an African people observing this? You know, all it is is celebrating the first Sunday after after the full moon. Granted, if you're somebody who, you know, observes, you know, like, um, I don't know, astrology. I do. I observe ast 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 astrology and, and, and the phases of the moon and stuff. But to go out and buy an Easter basket and wear the colorful pimp suit. Now, y'all know if churches was open right now, everybody be out there with a pimp suit on and you'll see all the neon suits and craziness for today. <laughs> so, yeah, it is made me take, take a moment, just detach from some stuff and just watch Dr. Barashenko. And uh, Jerron says, you never heard of him. Well, I want to tell you about him tonight because this this video is about celebrating the black man unapologetically, okay, fearlessly and honorably, okay? So someone that, you know, do their work and still the importance of that to me. And I don't know why my Facebook page is not sharing. So if y'all can help me out and share this on the Facebook side, because, you know, they still want you to uh, buy exposure and stuff. And I'll just share it afterwards. Dr. Barashango, his most notable work. And um, these are two books that I, I hold dear, near and dear. And I think you won't see it because like, I have the lights and for the green screen to work. Yeah, like, this is the green screen behind me. So, you know, stepping up in the YouTube world and unpacking stuff. But uh, this book here is African People and European Holidays, A Mental Genocide. This is book one. And this is African People and European Holidays, A Mental Genocide, book two. I have both of them. And I have some other work by, by Dr. Barashango as well. But what you would get out of these books is it tells you the madness that us as African people are putting ourselves through by observing the holidays, not holi not holy days, the he the holidays, H E L L, holidays, because for these holidays to come into existence, it was hell that other people had to pay. And by us still observing European holidays, it's celebrating the European, you know, conquering the indigenous people around the world. You know, thank you. Excellent books. I have them both. These are books you do not loan out. Okay. I have links for them in, in the description. So 
buy them, don't loan them. If somebody wants to read them, give them to them. So like I said, once I came out of the church and things like that, I started researching like different people would suggest books. And I, I make sure I bought them. I researched things for my, myself because one thing that I used to do was just go off of what somebody said and just, you know, what well, the Bible said this or so-and-so said this and question not and judge not. And I'm like, what? After you take off or get out of that madness, you're like, this did not make any sense. And sometimes it's like you already spent a whole bunch of money and wasted a bunch of years, you know, paying into this stuff that you like, you're still just, you get mad at yourself. But with Easter, what are people celebrating? Okay. Easter is on a different day every year. Okay. And all it is, is observing the start of the season of spring or the, what is it? The vernal equinox. Okay. And uh, yes, there you go. Shaka Musa Vereshenko, the great, great doctor. And um, that's what it is. It's why are we observing this? This has nothing to do with African people. Like if you took Easter and defined it, if you defined it for yourself, you wouldn't call it Easter. It will be something else. And it will it will have, you know, symbolic importance to you. If you if you're asked, why are you observing this? You have a good damn reason why you're celebrating it, you know? And for me, I have a good reason why I'm not celebrating it. Shout out to Sister Art Kathy. Make sure you subscribe to her channel. I, I got this term from, from her. Um, I'm pretty sure right now they're showing what the Ten Commandments on TV. And that's the worst thing you can show to your children. I remember seeing it when I was a little girl. They came on Channel 12 back in Cincinnati. And you, you see... This European dude getting nailed to a cross and stuff like that. And, and as I say, our Kathy cop called it torture porn. The what is it? Um, what is it? They, they called that movie, the the stop the stop, the passion of the Christ. It wasn't nothing passionate about that. That was just torture porn. And it's sick. It is it is mental genocide to African people because after we've seen our ancestors and the things that it, that are done to us to this day. You know, you just like, what the hell? You know, <laughs> why am I observing this? So I wanted to take this moment and just encourage you to check out the works of Dr. Barry Shango, but to also celebrate the Black man unapologetically. As I said, this is the month of April. And uh, last month, I observed Black Women's History Month. This, this month, I'm observing Black men. So how does... Um, European holidays, Dr. Barashango and the Black Man all fall into this video. I've, I've had all these topics on my mind to talk about each day, but uh, just different things happen and just put me in the wrong mental space where I just needed some time to be quiet, you know? And um, when I was watching, I think it was the video two of European, of African people in European holidays on YouTube. Dr. Barashenko had me cracking up. He was like, uh, I, I taught my children. When somebody say, what's up? Their response is, black people on the rise. And, and it just made me laugh. It put me in such a good mood. And I thought about it for a while. And um, I, I, I was like, he has risen. The black man is rising. The black man is on the rise, baby, OK? And it just made me really appreciate and think about the things that our black men have been through, ways that they have continued to, to persevere. And to put it in my, my own language, you know, or to make it make sense to me, you know, he is risen, okay? And it's up to me as a black woman to, you know, defend him. If I want him to defend my honor, protect me, give him something honorable to protect, but also have his back as well. And that's why it things just started coming into play. I started jotting down notes and I'm like, okay, it's making sense now. It's making sense. So when I was in the Christianity mindset, when I was a brain dead zombie, it was like, all I cared about was Jesus. All I cared about. And he did a damn thing for me, but I gave him all the credit all the credit that people would do and I gave them the credit and I was I was ashamed of like what my people did and I'll give you something to read uh for those who go and buy the book um and this is coming out of European uh, African people and European holidays a, a mental genocide book two okay and I'm coming off of page 85 
And I'm not, not going to read it to you, but I'm just going to let you know what it's titled, okay? The King James Version of the Bible. And you know how most of us are so quick to come out and say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm coming out of, the, out, of, out of the King James Version, the New Testament, all that. But do you really know who King James is? And you sit up here defending his work, got his name in your mouth, and yeah, look it up, okay? Look it up. But over the last couple of days, well, before I go to the next thing, I just want to say shout out to also the month of April. Make sure on April 27th, you observe the birthday of Dr. Barashenko, okay? His birthday is April 27th. And, um, but a couple of days ago, I had I had a friend out of Virginia had, had tagged me on a post where um, unknown savages, and you know, I just did that video on why some people want to call, why black people want to call themselves a savage. But uh, some unknown savages destroyed the historic mile marker for Nat Turner's insurrection. And um, yeah, that that really like just struck a nerve in me. It, it just really pissed me off because over the last couple of years, I've really got got into the story of Nat Turner and what he did for black people, not only him, but the Black Liberation Army of Southampton County did for black people to this day. And um, yeah, it just it put me in a place where I was just I just needed to meditate, go inside and just, you know, just think of, of, over some things. But because I've been there so many times, I actually just drove through Southampton County and I kicked myself. So I was so mad because I'm like, let me go over here and pay my respect at the sign. But instead, I kept driving and I'm like, I'm so mad about that. But I had to really sit and ponder. I'm like. It's not the sign that they, it's just a sign that they, they took away. But, you know, Nat Turner still lives in all of us. That's why I'm like, he is, he has risen. Like he is still in, in all of us. What, what he fought for is nothing to be ashamed about. It's nothing, you know, bad. Like he was a victim of a crime and he fought back. You know, that's, that's so honorable. That's so honorable for his story to live on and live through us. And we can't let his story just end. Okay. And um, around that area, I have two videos on my channel about the Nat Turner tour and also the area around Southampton County. And shout out to everyone who are now who has become my new family members from Southampton County. You know, uh, Dan Turner, uh, he's he's on, on my friends list. Shout out to the elder Khalifa. Uh, his information is in the description of my videos. If you watch, you'll see see him um, talking. He was our tour guide. He put the tour together. He owns, maintains the Nat Turner Library at the Cootie Jackalia Village in, in South Hampton County. So I love him so much. So if you're looking for rare books, hit him up. He, he has them, okay? And um, so the, around that area, there is a street called um, Blackhead Signpost Road. And when I, when I mean, you don't even need a definition or someone to tell you what that street, where that street name came from. Um, Blackhead Signpost Road. Following Nat Turner's in insurrection, the savages chopped off the heads of Black people and stuck them on, on poles and to intimidate uh, and um, discourage any further uprisings and insurrection. And, you know, it's just like, yeah. And lead, leading up to that, you know, um, April is the month of insurrections. If y'all know my history, I'm from, from Cincinnati, Ohio. And that's where, well, April was when we had our race riots back in 2001. Like prior to 9-11, we had the race riots in Cincinnati. And a lot of people who know me, once I say, I, I mention where I'm from, it kind of clicks. And I'm like, oh yeah, I heard about that when I was coming up. That's so it's, that's something that's known all around, you know, the area. I didn't participate in, I was trying to get home, you know, so I wasn't, I wasn't participating in it. Um, you said Nat Turner's name struck fear in their hearts as it should, because they, Look at what that turn was. He was held as property, you know, and bad things were happening. Like, you, like you can just, you can just sense all the the blood in the streets in Virginia. That's just an ugly place. The history is very ugly, and you know, that's that's just it. Like, I don't know how to explain it without getting emotional. But the there's a lot of blood on these streets, and a lot of that as you would think those behaviors kind of faded out no it's it's still going on to this day 
And that's why, you know, different names like Ida B. Wells Barnett, who spoke out and wrote and brought attention to, you know, the, the lynchings and the bad behavior and the, the illegal acts that was enacted on black people. Once, what would they say, tell the truth, shame the devil? That's exactly what she was doing. And that's exactly what it is. Nat, Nat Turner was, was, you know, insurrecting against, you know, the, the most heinous acts against humanity. And for them to go and take down his sign, not, not only Nat Turner's sign, I mean, his sign is just gone. The post is not, not, not the post is knocked down. And so the second time that my son and I went to um, the Nat Turner historic uh, mile marker, they were, um, they had a machine out there pulling up the cotton. And so somebody gave an excuse, like maybe um, they did it when they were taking up the cotton. The cotton is not in harvest right now in Virginia. Like it's, it still sticks. It's, it's, there's no cotton on it. The, the cotton does not come up until like the end of the fall. And plus where the cotton was out there, you have like at least six feet of clearing from the road to where the crop starts. So that was no, no accident, but the whole sign is just gone. But this also brings attention to how it's on camera and video, how savages go and shoot the historic marker for Emmett Till, a freaking 12 year old who was wrongly accused and, you know, innocently murdered by savages for something he didn't even do. So savages are going around damaging historic mal markers for the liberating acts and memorializing black people, black Americans. This is what is going on. So it, it, it brought up so something else. The more I dive into black history, I become more of a defender of it, become more of a defender. On my channel, I have a video about Muhammad Ali and how I had to, you know, check some savages who was bad mouthing him. And I guess they figured that I was one of the ones who just don't know any better. But once this person started going off and disrespecting him, he got checked and how and I put his name on my ancestor altar and left it up to the universe to take care of it. Because once you once you become unapologetic and fearless about your history and who you are, you be goddamned if you let somebody disrespect it right in front of your face, okay? I've um, never heard of the race, race, rights. Yeah, uh, go ahead and Google it. Um, um, Cincinnati Race Rights 2001. Uh, Jason, how you doing, brother Jason? Uh, Birth of a Nation by Nat Turn, but um, the Birth of a Nation by Nate Parker was brilliant. Absolutely. That is a beautiful work, a beautiful work. And that's why uh, movies like that are so important. They, they really did their best to bury that, but it didn't happen. You know, Nat, Nat Turner is planted in each of us. And um, I'll get to some other work on how you can instill that in your children, also in your life. And, you know, just make sure that our heroes never die. Because as Dr. Barashango's work, uh, not, not only in um, African people and European holidays and mental genocide, it talks about how ass backwards we are because we've been trained and indoctrinated to celebrate our captors in their history. I, this comes up like each year, uh, Thanksgiving, like why are we celebrating the massacre of the indigenous red man and, and the enslavement of us? Cause you know, we were enslaved and also too, uh, in the book, The Delectable Negro, we were on some dinner tables, okay? Speaking of Nat, Nat Turner, how after his, his neck was broken, his body parts were, you know, taken as souvenirs. You know, his family just got his skull back within the last decade or so, you know? Um, so it takes me to being unapologetic about our heroes, Okay. Um, something had hit me just in my mind. It kind of was like, I was battling something for a little while. And let me know if you know, uh, of the fictional story, the American sniper by Chris Kyle. Let me know if you heard about that, that fiction, that work of fiction. However, Hollywood made a bunch of money off of it. And like I said, it's just a work of fiction. He talked about going down to new Orleans 
and and killing black people although it was shown to be false but for someone to take pride you know of murdering black people in new orleans where's the honor in that he also has stolen valor he lied about a bunch of accomplishments in the, in the military just stolen valor just stuff like that and so I noticed something real quick. Shout out to the EDC guy, 073. Uh, I did a video with him. I think my video before last was me and the EDC guy, 073, as we talked about um, how to safely teach firearms to your children. Well, after we, we had got off a live, we had a conversation and he was like, hey, um, I have this book, like uh, my last name is Essex. Like I have this book that talks about a sniper and I'm like, Mark Essex. Like, yes, we we, we are related. He's somewhere in our tree because I, all of us Essex, we have this group and we keep, you know, just sharing who we are, where we're from and trying to place each other on, on the tree. And pretty much they were like, if it's a black person whose last name is Essex, we are related, you know? And um, I did not know about Mark Essex until like, early adulthood and come to fi find out he served in the navy um he's from emporia kansas yeah emporia kansas and i'm kicking myself that i did not drive through and, and visit his grave when i was in kansas because right now i have no reason to go back to kansas ever um but if you never heard of mark essex he he served in the navy and he had experienced racism real bad racism back uh in the 70s and during and he was on the west coast okay and during that time um in the 70s was when um the navy was was having race riots on the kitty hawk and stuff i have this book over here that i need to read pretty soon like i have so many books uh this is black sailor white navy by john daryl sherwood i need to, to read this book shout out to brother kareem who's also a moderator who suggested that, that book to me but um after after Mark, uh, he had got out the Navy after two years, it's 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 said that he joined the Black Panther Party for self-defense. But I think I'm not sure how true that is, because I know at that at that time it was a government operative to make the Black Panther Party appear to be the most dangerous or the most significant threat to um, American security and stuff like that. But um, no, then. um. He allegedly, because he never had his day in court, he allegedly went to uh, New Orleans, where it is uh, where he is alleged to have went on a shooting spree, and that's where this American sniper comes from. I don't want to give you too much, but go ahead and re read more of it. And the reason why I bring that up is because um, it's like, okay, he was fighting against injustice. He was a victim to racism. And there was no one to put a stop to it, no one to put it into it for him. And, you know, however ways he thought to avenge it, look at what he had to go through, you know. And um, I don't want people to deem me a BIE or, you know, I, I have hate speech or nothing or nothing like that. This is all documented history. OK, I'm just telling you about it now. Um, I found this book. This was, uh, I found this book around like 2014 by an author named Angela Freeman. And on the cover, it didn't click who this was, but I had purchased this as a ch children's book for my, my, uh, my, my bonus children and my son at the time. And I did, it didn't click, but we always read our stories together. And she actually gave a tribute to Mark Essex, you know, my family member. And this is the book, Sankofa Super Heru's Book Two. And this is Mark Essex in front in his Navy dress blues. And he's passing, passing a Pan African flag to this young brother. And in the background, as you see, you know, the different crimes against humanity that was, you know, acted out on, on, on innocent black people in the back. But, um, I won't, I'm not going to really give out too much of this book because this is a great buy for your children to teach them their history the right way. Because as black people, our heroes are portrayed to us as evil, as, um, you know, just beastly, we're always a terrorist. We're always this. And it's absolutely asinine. It's 
it's immoral and it's it's just false. And once you start coming out of European holidays, when you when you compare like side by side African heroes and you know so called European you know hell raisers, you know like um, Cristobal Colon. And I don't know why they still have like Columbus Day sales and shit like that and have Patrick Henry airports and malls and Robert E. Lee Day, okay? And places named Jefferson Davis, all right? But when you can compare them side by side, you can begin to see why you're quick to celebrate European holidays, but quick to dismiss and, you know, demonize black black people black heroes who fought back against injustice and I, I i have this 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 saying okay and i'm gonna say a bad word all right i just want to live my life and be unfuckwithable don't fuck with me okay but if if you're vengeful towards me i have every right to be revenge or this, this is not an actual word but to seek my revenge, okay? Because you fuck with me first, you know? And that's why they have trained us to, you know, forgive and forget and bullshit like this. And I'm not saying go out and, and do harm to anybody, do not. But you have, have the right to be unfuckwithable. People shouldn't fuck with you. People shouldn't do mean things to you and bother you and just act out violence on you you that's that's not cool and they don't have a right to do that but you have every right to stick up and stick up for yourself and defend yourself that's why it's called self-defense okay leave me and leave other people the fuck alone okay and that's probably the most cuss words i'll say in this video <laughs> but uh like i said angela freeman she really did a beautiful honor and tribute to my ancestor mark essex and this this is it here this is the write-up sh that she has for him and this is his his picture here okay and um someone may come and say well taisha you know he was um shooting police officers in um new orleans stuff like that like i said i'm not advocating violence against anybody not at all but um it's documented in in history by um by a non-black author james lowen Suck sundown towns and something else that kind of that kind of got me pissed off you know i was just was really sad that this happened was uh there's a sign i mean um a police department in louisiana crawley louisiana that they now have a curfew just like uh, we had a curfew in Cincinnati after the race riots. So people, citizens in Crowley, Louisiana have to be in the house by nine o'clock. So to signal the start of the curfew, the police department took it upon themselves to drive through the streets playing the purge siren from the movie, The Purge. Now, I enjoyed that the, the, the Purge series. I enjoyed it, except for the second one. It was boring, but I enjoyed it. But however, being just in america the start of you know curfew at sundown sundown towns think about the psychological damage that you're doing to black people like right now with the curfew and the COVID and all that many people are freaking out like this is a first and something like this has happened to many of us and also we also have small children so this is something they're going to tell their children about it's going to continue cycling for some people their stories are going to be this for others it's going to be a lot more traumatizing and right here with this playing the purge siren through this this city which is um i had someone who actually lived there they let let me know that the demographic is affluent white people and super there there were super impoverished black people so you're riding through this area of the south louisiana that is like within within the average is about an hour and a half from known documented sundown towns but you're playing the purge siren okay and like i said if you don't know what a sundown town is this place is i'm pretty sure you can still find a sign somewhere but these are places that have signs as you enter in the, the town and stuff, if you're if you're black, don't let the sun go down on you, and it have the N word as well. And the sirens, they would you know they would come from either the fire department or the water towers. But there was a siren somewhere that you know signaled black people start getting out of town. Okay, and this was not just in the south; it went as north as um, Indiana and other places as well, including Washington. So it just, it really hit me like, wow, okay. I, I can't, I can't explain 
complaining, but it's continuing traumatizing black people and black impoverished people, but also in that area, you know that I'm pretty sure people in Louisiana and in the South, you know, who are still here, who can trace their, their families back to the plantations. You know, a lot of us went, went up north and I, I have a family member over here on my, my ancestor altar. They had their own school in, in Alabama. The Klan burnt it down. You know, so a lot of us, you know, are definitely descendants of those who survived Jim Crow and, you know, the Gina Six. Exactly. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, but encouraging myself to be unapologetic about Mark Essex, you know, that is my, my family member, you know, he served in the Navy just, just like I did, but he was, you know, seeking retribution for wrongs that was done to him. And like I said, I'm not advocating anybody to do violence because when we say something like, like this, we get labeled. And I ain't on it because the FBI put put out an article that is not what you read or who you idolize or anything like that that turns you into a terrorist. I have I have that article, but um, it made me think about how this Chris Kyle dude is celebrated and he's named the American Sniper when Mark Essex is in this book called um, the Ultimate Guide, the Ultimate Sniper's Guide. Let me find this real quick. I will tell you. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I will show you exactly what it is. Here it is. Um, the book is called The Ultimate Sniper by Major John L. Plaster, U.S. Uh, Air Force Retired or Army Reserve. I can't, it's, it's kind of blocked out. But in the, or is that, is that Army Reserves? I think it's Army Reserves. But uh, in his book, he's making money off the name of my ancestor, John uh, uh, Mark Mark Essex. And it sh shows here, um, a 21st century police sniper is specially trained and armed with a quality marksman rifle. And he goes to talk about, um, but he, he misnamed, well, this was his, his nickname. He called him Jimmy Essex, but it's Mark Essex. And he calls, calls him a racial extremist who had vowed to kill as many whites as possible. Negative. A racist extremist. That, that That's no way in hell, okay? Black people cannot be racist. They cannot be an extremist, okay? Um, where are we at? But um, he's in here talking about... Um, the, well, just to, to sum it up, the topic of being a sniper and um, ways, I'll say ways, um, tactics and techniques of snipers, but he's also talking about Mark Essex, my ancestor. So if he can publish a book and, you know, say these things about, about my ancestor, I should be able to speak proudly, unapologetically, and honorably about, about my ancestor. And and I encourage you to do so as well. I had attended a training not too long ago where they were uh, talking about, see, now here's the thing, if I didn't know any better, because I was one of the few black people in this, in this training session, and they're talking about terrorism, and they play this clip of like Muslims, things like that, but they have the voice of Malcolm X behind it. And so the point of them playing this training was to kind of associate Malcolm X with ISIS. And I'm like, hold on. It was it was something, it was like they had their fat, their, they were just all over the place with it. And I'm like, hold on. They're trying to associate Malcolm X with ISIS and all types of other bull. I'm like, that's that's not it, because Ma Malcolm X was not was not about this. This was was not him. And at the moment, it is really stuck with me because I'm like, I can stand up and I can battle everybody in, the, in this classroom. And, you know, I could do that. But I took it upon myself because when um, when I, re I remember that I, I still had my video that I put up about visiting the childhood home of Malcolm X and speaking about him and, you know, just really defending him unapologetically. But I, I just couldn't do it at the time on a grand scale. But I took it upon myself to fight that battle. In a, in a way that my point would, would get across and that I could not be manipulated into getting emotional and playing into their games. So um, another thing is that I wanted yeah, to, to pay attention to, like I look at, at vehicles, I pay attention to vehicles a lot. 
And I'm noticing um, a lot of vehicles have this um, this Punisher sticker on the back of it. And again, you know, tying into this this whole um, this whole symbolism, and you know, just being aware of people who are really out to uh, inflict violence, and you know, just this fictional mentality of superiority, and but it's through violence and and, and putting people people through fear. Um, bear with me for a moment. I'm going to try and share my screen with y'all. Okay. And it tells me that sometimes it may not work because I need two screens, but we shall see. Okay. We shall see if this works. All right. So I'm going to see if I can do this really quick. If not, I'll just read to you from, um, it look like it's not, it's not going to work either. So it's okay. So what I'm going to do is just read to you, um, this clip. I think it will still leave the camera on me, but I'm going to put the link and you can look that up. And it's what does the Punisher skull mean when it comes to, um, and this, this, uh, skull, the Punisher, I saw something similar to that in one of the purge installments. But um, where are we at? Let me find this really quick. Um, it's saying about this. I'm gonna put it in the comments so y'all can read along with me with this Punisher, like in, instilling fear and things like that. Okay, so I just shared that with y'all. But it's, I'm coming from Inverse Magazine, and um, let's see, let's see. Yes, um, it says, but there is a disconnect between Frank ha Frank Castle's penchant for violence and law enforcement. Police brutality is a plague among in modern America, yet the embrace of the Punisher by police is chilling, if not bad optics. In February 2017, a Kentucky precinct endured heavy criticism when it branded vehicles with the Punisher decals with the words Blue Lives Matter over them. Later, police chief Cameron Logan were getting so many calls and they're saying that the Punisher logo means we're out to kill people and that's not the meaning behind that. And um, people should do a little bit more, more research. But the thing of it is, it's it it doesn't matter what you intend. The fact of the matter is that it's it's what was put out there to instill fear in people, and that fear is mainly felt by black people who have been victims of brutality and you know in unjust murders and stuff like that. You know, so I just want you to take this as a moment to just reflect inside, kind of detach from European holidays because what you're doing is continuing the psychological mindfuck to celebrate death, destruction, theft, capture, rape of, you know, indigenous people around the world to include your black self. All right. And shout out to uh, Solo Dolo. Thank you for the super chat. Salute to Mark James Robert Essex. He had the spirit of Nat, Nat Turner. There you go. Because when when you look at others who observe those who have done bad things to us over time and continue to continue to do so, they can celebrate them. They can put their faces on the side of Mount Rushmore and um, on, on currency and things like that. Speaking of uh, Dr. Barashango, he uh, refers to Washington, D.C. as um, as a, what does he call it? Uh, shoot, 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 shoot. I forgot. But he named it, he he calls it, uh, he, he doesn't refer to it as DC. He refers to it as the land of Benjamin Banneker. And um, yeah, with observing our own holidays and our own heroes, we give the proper credit to those who have put in the work. And the more you see your Black footprint across this country and across this world, you won't think of yourself and your contributions as so small and minute. When I, when I drove across country, each time I made sure I looked for something black. <laughs> and uh, it was just amazing. It was a, amazing of, of what I found, the history, and it just it just added to my self-worth, my view of, of my people, my culture, and our contributions, you know. So I, I highly encourage you to just take a moment and detach from it and just celebrate us and the stuff that, that we just, that we have done and, and we did, and, and those who have given their life, okay? 
Um, I have this book here, African American Holidays. I refer to this book all the time, okay, all the time. And uh, there's a link for it in, in the description. It's by uh, James Anike, if I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. But um, the holidays that he, he, he has in here is, um, I'll just re read off the, the chapters. Uh, cha chapter one is slave holiday, Saturday night parties. That, that, was, that was deep. That made me think. And I have a video coming up soon, another live video where we'll talk about the new normal. Like how does this COVID-19 pandemic how how it's going to affect us from from here on out because i've been thinking a lot about that as well and i want your input as well uh christmas john canoe festival election day festival christmas addicts day then chapter two he goes into martin luther king jr's birthday chapter three black history month um he talks about uh dr Carter G. Woodson. Now, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, a lot of us, you know, we are familiar with his work, um, The Miseducation of the Negro. Carter G. Woodson has another book, and I want to buy it so bad, but you can read a sample of it on Amazon Prime. You can read a sample, but because I'm trying to, you know, really slow down with buying a bunch of books. I'm just a book hoarder, but he has another book. I believe it's something like, um, it's about the Negro Christian. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's so deep. And I want to read it, but I'm challenging myself to read at least 10 of the books I already got that's on my on my list to read, then I could buy it. But check that book out. If you already have it, let me know. But it's something about the Negro Christian. So like the makings of a Negro Christian or something like that. It's not how to make a Negro Christian. I, I got I got that book. And I forgot to mention it when I did my review on the, uh, in the House Invictus. That's a good book. That's a good book. So and then he goes to um, the next uh, holiday for African people after Black History Month is National Malcolm X Day. OK, Malcolm X Day, I actually celebrated for the first time last year. I went down to Jacksonville, Florida to uh, B-Sun Arts uh, Center. Oh, my gosh. Shout out to Brother B-Sun and my sister Takara for getting me down. there. Like that was just so magical. But I heard that. Uh, here in Atlanta, they have an even bigger Malcolm X celebration. So if this COVID, you know, was canceled before then, we may be able to go. But if not, I'll be right here on live with y'all talking about it. Honoring the, the life and the work and the contributions of Malcolm X. OK. Um, yeah. But in, in April, like I said, I made up my, my own holidays. I observe black men during the month of April because without y'all, we would have just it's no us where black men are the balance to black black women the yin and the yang okay without one there's there's no other okay um then in chapter five african liberation day then we also have uh juneteenth the million man day of atonement the emoji the emoja caramel and then kwanzaa then we have some other uh important dates in african-american history okay um if you haven't watched my video, uh, the review on the House Invictus, I did a video or so ago. They had a date in there, July, I think it was July 6, 1866. And I forgot to mention that for that review, but uh, that was around the time when the 14th Amendment was being ratified. OK, so they put a bunch of gems in that movie. Y'all go ahead and check that out as well. Check out the House Invictus. That's a pretty, pretty good movie. All right. Um, once again, just to sum everything up, we talked about Dr. Bear Shango in, in his his work, his life, his books. I have those in, in the description. So these books were just monumental in getting me to where I'm at today to appreciate, love, and honor my Black self and my Black people and our contributions and really put forth an investment in our future, okay? It's okay for other cultures to be proudly this, be proudly that. They got every right to. So leave me alone because I got every right to celebrate and observe, empower and uplift my Black self without being labeled anything adverse are being shamed for doing so okay and i encourage you to do so as well all right we also talked talked about the life the work of prophet nat turner so if you're looking for this book here this is by the, the elder uh khalifa um i'll put his information in the description but um you can find his his contact information on my videos about nat turner um, he is at the Kujijakalia village in uh, Southampton, Virginia. Okay. 
Um, what else? This book here. Yes. <laughs> like I said, I, I'm a hoarder of books. I did talk about this book really quick, but I do have a link for it in the description. This is going to be empowering. I have not read it yet, but this is on my list to start on April 26th. Okay. Cause I, tell, I give myself two weeks to read a book. Then I move on to the next one. But this one here is called I Freed Myself, the African-American Self-Emancipation and Civil War Era by David Williams. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to start this book because we're always thinking and giving credit to someone else for emancipating us. Never. We emancipated our dang on sales. Um, that's why this book, this other book by Angela Freeman that I got it for my children, Insurrection. I'm not going to give away any spoilers from this book. Like if you're looking for something to sit down and read to your children and change their lives, you know, this is not taught to them in the classroom. That's why this time where schools are closed, you can teach your children whatever you want and do it thoroughly okay um you have free reign to be your children's first teacher you know um but yeah i'm not gonna give away anything in, in insurrection the link is in the description order this for your children okay they're gonna love it like i said my son he's he's had these books for years and you just would not believe like we could sit down here and talk about things he'll pick up on stuff he's so so bright he's so brilliant and you know he loves his culture and I'm, I'm just so proud so i'm like yeah you know it works you know no matter how much you know um he tried the 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 school system to teach him other stuff what we his father and i taught him and those around him who love him it sticks you know and he has he has pride in himself and his culture and he's just a naturally great person great great young man okay like i said you have um Sankofa Super Heru, shout out. Like I said, this is by Angela Freeman. Get all of her books, okay? You will not go wrong, because I did. It's well worth the investment. This is called a BB Fahodier. Um, a BB Fahodier means African liberation. This book is in English and Spanish. Great book. Um, another one here is Lessons for the Watoto, book one. Watoto is children in Kiswahili. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's, this is just amazing. Like we have so many tools. Like I don't get how people are like, I'm so bored during the quarantine. I'm like, because you just did not take an interest in preparing. I mean, this, I won't say preparing for this, but just feeding yourself, you know, as much as we go buy bags of groceries, you got to feed your mind. You got to, you know, feed your culture. You have to just find things to do to keep your children interested. So hopefully these are great tools for you to use. We also, she also has a book here. Omawale and a butterfly. Um, Omawale is, is a powerful, powerful African name for a young boy. Beautiful, co colorful books. And it's, it's not like, you know, you have a page of like, you know, one line. She has a huge story. Like it is a thorough read for your children. And you will learn some as well. Like I said, I learned about my ancestor through Angela Freeman. Shout out to brother Jason. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really appreciate you. And I can't wait to uh, add your book to my collection. Also talk to you soon. Um, like I said, I freed myself. Great book. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to come on here and talk to those of us who are not going to sit and watch the passion of the Christ and, you know, who are not going to, um, where are we at? I'm going to make you a moderator as well, Brother Jason. I just have to, I'll do that on the comments on the other side, okay? So I'm going to make you a mod. So thank you. Um, yeah, we're not doing that. Uh, the pastor up in Philadelphia that had Easter service, for what? You know, they so you're going to go risk your life for this bull, okay? So yeah, I just had to kind of come on here and be the voice that those of us, who don't observe the European holidays, who are out of the traditions. We just are just doing things for ourselves, the betterment of ourselves, empowering ourselves, but also come on here and celebrate my brothers, the black man. You know, I love you so much. I mean, the quote and Andy Stone, but uh, <laughs> that was just a beautiful song. And it really is. So at a time right now where Others are giving credit to somebody else for rising. I just want to say that I give credit to my black men who, you know, have really paid the ultimate price for us for, for, for being here and continuing to persevere, be here and protect us. So just know that I got your back and I love you and I will continue to celebrate you. I'm happy to see us and the things that that those who came before us, such as Nat Turner, Barashango, 
uh, mark Essex. We're not, we're not in vain and we don't forget those things. We continue to teach our children and, you know, that's just about it. So um, that's all I have for today. I got everything off my chest and I was in a good mood when I did it. <laughs> Cause like I said, the past couple of days have been kind of tough. I'm like, this is some bull what's going on. And it's, it's difficult right now to try to stay sane while the world is in chaos. So I'm trying to connect with another sister to get her on here. And we'll talk about, um, the importance of mental health, not just right now during the Corona, but just 365. Like we, as a people, we are carrying a lot on our shoulders and, you know, as much as they want us to indulge in escapism, we have to heal and deal with things and be there for, for each other because I've seen some people who have made, you know, Facebook and Instagram posts about not doing so well mentally right now. So the kind of person I am, I don't take those as, you know, as a joke or fishing for attention. I'm like, yo, what can I do? How can I how, how can I be here for you? So make sure you call and check on people and see and see how they're doing. There's a lot of of just stress and unnecessary stuff happening right now and it's affecting us in different ways so i would say make sure you pay attention to your children shout out to my husband in my mind david banner he did a podcast where he was talking about seniors in high school and how our children are dealing with this like for those who are my age um uh 9 11 was like our big stress thing that you know happened and kind of you know we are the world at us you know we are the world and know things like that so right now this can this is kind of like our children going through it so make sure we check on our nieces our nephews our our, our kid our, our children i'm sorry our batoto we, we check on them and make sure that we have a healthy healthy lines of communication to you to you know explain this and help them get through this situation okay he said, um, forever queen, uh, forever king. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, queen Essex. Thank you so much for that. Um, we love you dearly. Love you so much. I understand some bull right now, but we will get through this. Look out for your skin and your can. Exactly. So that's all I have. I look forward to the conversation uh, that happens in the comments. I'll be answering back, but I just want to say, you know, um, I say to our ancestors, rest in power to them. And thank you uh, to our ancestors uh, like Nat, Nat Turner, Dr. Bereshango, Mark Essex, and even more for their sacrifices and contributions for Black people here in America and also worldwide. Okay. I love y'all so much and I'll see y'all on the next video. Okay.